Are holy gaming mice actually worth buying? This is a question I've been wanting to answer for ages, because it seems that more and more of them are coming on the market, and at first I was a little bit unsure why. Clearly, they've got holes in them, which keeps the weight down, but are they actually as lightweight as people say they are? Does this make a difference for gaming? And are they actually comfortable to use over a long term? Are you making a bit too much of a compromise? Let's find out. So for this lineup, I've got two lightweight holy mice here. This one is the MM710, I believe, or 711 from Cooler Master. This is the ExtraFi M4. I've used this for a while. I do really like it, actually. It's surprisingly comfortable. But then we've also got some other mice. This one is a lot heavier, it's the Logitech G502. To demonstrate, I've grabbed our handy dandy kitchen scales, fresh off the press from yesterday's Yorkshire puddings. And you'll see that this, the M711, comes in at around about exactly 60 grams, which is very, very impressive. The M4 comes in at 73 grams, at least in my testing. The much heavier G502 comes in at 115 grams. Gonna get some muscles using that. The Razor Viper, also very lightweight, comes in at 72 grams. And I'd like to point out then that these two are more or less exactly the same weights. This one doesn't have this holy design. This one does. Will it make that much difference? We'll find out in a little bit. And then my personal gaming mouse, the Logitech Pro Ghost Edition that Logitech sent out a couple of months ago, comes in at 80 grams, which I think is very impressive for a wireless mouse, but it's still nowhere near as light as that M711. So will it make a difference? Let's get cracking. Let's get gaming. Let's get fragging. So then, let's start with the MM711 from Cooler Master. It's definitely the smallest and lightest mouse that we have in our test. So in theory, this should be the one that sells the whole holy thing to me. So we plug it in, keep everything nice and fair. And immediately, actually, I really like the design of it. You get the Cooler Master purple comes shining through. And the whole thing is definitely a little bit on the smaller side. It's something that you can probably grip a little bit better as a result of this, but if you've got huge hands, then I can tell you almost certainly right off the bat, this will either take a lot of getting used to or it won't really be for you. But yeah, it's definitely very easy to pick up and move about if you do want to do flick shots and things. But of course, a gaming mouse is just as much about the sensor as it is buttons and comfort. So we will see on this 240 hertz monitor uh, whether we can actually get some Good kills, good results. Is it a good mouse to actually uh, use in games like Apex Legends? It really does feel very comfortable, actually. I have to give it give it to them there. It's it's a lot bigger. It sort of bulges at the back. On the question of weight, though, is this really making that much difference to me? Well, it does feel very, very easy to flick around. The, the main thing for me, anyway, with a gaming mouse is that it's got to be very responsive and it's got to be very comfortable to actually have in your hand. If you don't have these things, then it's just not really gonna give you a very good experience at all. Hey, there you go. Lightweight mouse confirmed, it can get kills. It, it can be done. Let's talk a bit more specifically about the whole holy nature of it though. So this obviously came in to reduce weight. And when I first saw it, I thought, if I'm honest, that it wasn't going to be very comfortable to use whatsoever. And maybe the first ones weren't. I think it's probably taken quite a long time for people and companies to actually get something that is refined and something that actually does work the way uh, that you would like it to and remains comfortable to use over those long sessions. It's actually surprisingly comfortable um, to fit in my hand. It really, really is. I've got nothing but good things to say about it so far, to be honest. The fact that there's some body actually where your thumb rests I think is a big win for the uh, MM711 just because it means that your most natural resting position remains very comfortable and it actually feels a lot more like a normal mouse than some of the others I've tested. There you go. Come on! All right I am I am very impressed with this mouse now. This is surely gonna end badly oh no! But what we've learned, comfortable, accurate, good for gaming, relatively inexpensive, two thumbs up. Oh, right then, mouse numero dos. That's mouse number two if you don't speak Marcus language. And this is the ExtraFi M4. And I've used this before during my initial review period last year. 
And the thing that is immediately more obvious, I guess, if you like, with the M4 is that it's designed, I think, more to accommodate everybody in the sense that it is a bit more of a larger mouse. Its design, I guess, is pretty classic. You've got more holes on it than a th the, the Cooler Master one, I believe. It's got RGB lighting. It does come in a few different colors. While I think it is more comfortable in my hand as it's a bit more natural to hold, I really don't like the fact that you've got holes where your thumb rests. I'm sure people will get over this very quickly, but it does actually make quite a big difference. And you might say that that's obviously all about weight cutting down, but the Cooler Master one is lighter than this and it doesn't have that problem. And it just means that using this over a prolonged period of time, I don't think it's quite as comfortable. But what I will say about this ExtraFly mouse is that the sensor is very, very good. There's certainly no complaints when it comes to accuracy with this thing. Yes, come on! Oh, squad down, squad down. Thank you very much. <laughs> it may not be the most comfortable. That is definitely a compromise that you're going to have to get used to if you're trying to adopt something like this. But... It gets the job done, and I think that's way more important, really, in the long term. Oh, I thought I was going to get him there. I think that the comfort issue is definitely something to bear in mind, and bear in mind that the Cooler Master mouse does, uh, or at least is, a bit more comfortable over a longer period of time for me. But I think the downside with that is it very much is on the small side. So if you're someone that doesn't like a small mouse, then you will almost certainly prefer the Extra Fi. But this has a load of holes in it and it weighs about the same as the Razer Viper. So, what's that one like? It is quite low profile and this is definitely going to take quite a bit of an adjustment period if I was going to use this full time. And I don't like the fact that when you put your hand over it, you almost feel like you're pressing into the mat. You do have to grip the mouse a little bit differently. But again, it, it feels very responsive. It's pretty comfortable to use. It's a bit too low profile, I think, for me personally. But again, it's going to take some getting used to. And if you like that, then you like that. This is how they've cut down the weight a bit on this mouse anyway. They have reduced some mass and they've done that in the height department rather than cutting holes in the mouse. But because you don't have any holes and you instead have this lovely textured rubber finish on the left and right hand sides, it does mean that, for me anyway, it's a lot more comfortable to use over a longer period of time. There's no doubt about that. The fact that it is that little bit lighter obviously means that you can move it around and it's not going to feel like a wired mouse and you can move the mouse around and not really feel like you've got anything attached which is definitely a positive thing. To summarize then with the Viper, I really like this mouse. I like the fact that they've made it this light without requiring any of those holes which is obviously the whole point of this video. Do you need a holy uh, mouse or a holy mouse? Um, not necessarily. This clearly shows that. But they've done this by changing the shape, which not everyone is going to like and appreciate. So if you can try this before you buy, or at least buy from someone that is going to let you return it, that's what I would recommend. But if you do get on with it, then there's very little not to like about it. It's very, very good. But back to the whole headline question, though, of holy mice. Are they worth buying? Well, it actually is quite a simple question to answer. And the reason I wanted to bring both the G Pro and the Viper into the equation is because these prove that you don't need to go for that design just to get a lightweight mouse. I think the whole 60 grams thing of the M711 is fantastic, but this alone doesn't make this a good mouse. It just means it's a bit lighter. And lighter may be better for some, but not for everybody. But the main thing about the 711 really actually is the fact that it's so much cheaper than all of the other mice that I've tested really today. This one is available at the time of filming for around about $59.99, which I think is a steal. Yes, it's not going to be for everybody. You might not even like the look of the design, let alone how it feels. And yes, you could go for the G Pro. This is still my favorite mouse rounded out on the whole, but at 130 pounds, it is so much more expensive. You could quite literally have two of the Cooler Masters to get this, that for a cord that you can't really feel anyway with this, I'm not sure it's gonna be worth it for everybody. And I'd wager that the vast majority of people should spend that extra money on other aspects of their setup and just get themselves something like this. Really interested to hear from you on this one. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. It really does help out. Get subscribed for more videos just like this. Don't forget to check out my keyboard video that I did last week. Is a gaming keyboard actually worth it? Well, you have to watch it to find out. Thank you so much for watching. Amazon affiliate links listed down below. I'll see you in the next one.